I thought about when you said um, commend, we commend ourselves uh, to God's will and I shall not pray on that. That's what I want for all of us. And uh, he gave me Romans 16, verse 17, he gave me two, 12, verse 17 to um, 20. Mm -hmm. Now I beseech you, brother, mark them which cause division and offense contrary to the doctrines which ye have learned, and avoid them. For they that are such serve not the Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly, and by good words and fair speeches deceives the hearts of the simple. For your obedience is come abroad unto all men. I am glad therefore on your behalf, but but yet I would have but yet I would have you wise unto that which is good and simple concerning evil. And the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. And then I went on down to 25, to uh, the same chapter, the 25 and 27. Now to him that is that is a power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery, which was kept secret since the world begun, but now is made manifest, and by the scriptures of the prophets, according to the commandments of the everlasting God, made known to all nations for the obedience of faith. To God only wise be glory through Jesus Christ forever. Amen. Amen. And I got one more for you all now. He gave me um, the, the First Corinthians uh, 2 to 13. Unto the church of God, which is at, I put at life of my ministry. To them that are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints, with all that in every place call upon the name of Jesus Christ our Lord, both theirs and ours. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God always on your behalf for the grace of God which is given you by Jesus Christ, that in everything you are enriched by him in all utterance and in all knowledge, even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you, so that ye come behind in no gift waiting for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall also, and this is the one I really I'm focused on for us, who shall also confirm you until the end that ye may be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful by whom ye are called unto the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Now I beseech you, brethren and sisters, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing, and that there is no division among you, but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. For it had been declared unto me of you, my brothers and sisters, by them which are of the house of whatever that word is, I don't know properly, but there are contentions among you, divisions and stuff. Now this I say that every one of you said, I am Paul, and I am Apollos, and I am Cyprus, and I am of Christ. Is Christ divided? So, and I thought about, and I stopped there, I didn't finish reading it, but I thought about what you said when you said committing, committing ourselves to God's will. So that, that was there was for me, so that's what I'm going to be on.
that's the little book I wrote. It's only about 22 pages. It's about the heart. people think about maybe their past all the time. Like, you know, something that happened to them a long time ago. Uh, what their mother might have done to them. What past relationship done to them. Whatever it might be. And this thing might have happened 20 years ago, 10 years ago, whatever it may be. And we're still thinking about those things today. And those things, they affect our daily lives today, and I don't think we understand it either, that what we think on affects us even as today. So if you look at the, the last page of your handout, <laughs> this is just uh, one of the things that I've learned is that each emotion that we feel, like anger, sadness, um, fear, each, each emotion that we feel, it has a certain energy that comes with it. So if you look at this, this is just a little chart of kind of like that, that energy output that those feelings have. If you look at the bottom, some of those bad feelings, you know, um, guilt, anger, they have a low energy. And if you're constantly in that low energy, uh, a lot of the medical science is finding out that it, it can affect your health, it can affect your body. A lot of our sicknesses are coming from us being in a constant state of stress is what some of we've learned and some of the speakers that we've heard about. And being in that constant state of stress that we're constantly thinking on something that we don't need to be thinking on is actually lowering our immune system. Mm -hmm. And that allows and I don't know if y'all know, but everybody has cancer cells in their body. They're just dormant and our body fights against them, is what it's supposed to do naturally. So when that cancer grows, our body is not doing something that it's supposed to do, which is to, to keep those cancer cells down. And that emotion and stress lowers our immune system, which allows those things to grow. So you really wanna if you have those feelings that are keeping you stressed out or whatever it may be, you want to get rid of those things because they can hurt you. So, um, so as a man think it, so is he. Um, and not just, you know, it can affect your health, but if we're constantly thinking that, you know, I'm poor, I'm broke, I'm I don't have enough. That's exactly what you're going to get. So, and it seems simple, but we're really not taught that. I don't remember anybody telling me that you shouldn't think that you're you're going to be broke or nobody ever taught me that <laughs> growing up in school or even in my home. But they probably were never taught. 
and uh, another verse that Proverbs 18:21, death and life is in the power of the tongue and those who love it will eat its fruit and that's either good or bad so one of the things I'm starting to do is just try to check everything that I say not everything but I'm trying to <laughs> but everything that I say about anybody else or especially myself. You should take care of yourself, number one, because you can't help anybody else or do anything for anybody else if you're in a depressed state or up and down with your emotions. And a lot of what we're thinking on um, is coming from our heart. Some things are so deep-rooted in us that they've been there for so long, we may not even be aware of it and we've grown up with it, and we've come, uh, become comfortable with it. Because it's just like a little friend with us growing up, and that's what some of the book is about, um, planting good seeds in your heart. You know, I'm beautiful, I'm black, I'm, a, I'm intelligent, I'm worthy of a, a good man, a good job, whatever it may be. And you wanna constantly um, you are your biggest cheerleader. You want to constantly um, plant good seeds in your heart. And that's some of what the book talks about. And then a lot of that is you have to do a lot of self-examination. I'm more into trying to get myself together before I can try to help other people because a lot of people don't take what you have to say about them. So let me get myself together, if y'all <laughs> so, um, You have to constantly, you know, what am I putting in myself today? What have I allowed for somebody to put into me? Sit down and write it down. Um, you know, be honest with yourself. You don't have to tell anybody else. Be honest with yourself. Uh, what are some things that, that I know don't line up with the word that I think about myself? And um, Jeremiah 17, 9 says, the heart is deceitful above all things. And I believe that means that our heart is such a powerful thing that it can be deceitful if we put those things in it. And it can grow good or bad just as good as anything else. So if we put something bad in it, it's going to make it do what it do. <laughs> it's going to, you know, do it to the best of its ability. Mm -hmm. You put good in it, it's going to manifest that good. And I said, you know, anyone is capable of having a wicked heart. You know, we might say that we're not, but put in the right circumstance. You know, depending on what you had to do for yourself or your family or whatever was coming against you. And that's why it's not good to to judge other people because we don't know what they uh, went through or what has caused them to, to, you know, be doing what they're doing. You know, it's evidently not, you know, correct or spirit, so they're out of line. I mean, because it's funny you say that, because I don't know why, but we was talking about, well, I do know why, because I showed them the CD, mm -hmm. The Secret. And so we, this is what we was talking about too, and um, and we do bring stuff up on ourselves like that. But the Bible say the heart is wicked, though. Mm -hmm. So the, even if we are trying to be good, know that you need to study, pray for our. We need to study, pray, cause the word, to, the Lord tells us that our heart is wicked, mm -hmm. and and that's what's kind of scary for me for a while. So I stay on, um, search my heart, and know my reins and thoughts. Yeah, because the, the Bible says that the heart is wicked. Deceitful above all things. But yeah, you you put you can make it what it yeah, is. Yeah. And it can easily go easily astray. Yeah. <laughs> but it, that's why he says think on these things, higher things. Yeah. Yeah. And another verse, um, Philippians three thirteen. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto the things which are before me. So that's, again, not, not looking at our past. We can't change anything about our past. You know, uh, uh, 
you know, everybody has went through something in the past. Mm -hmm. Everybody. Mm -hmm. I don't know one person that hasn't, you know, some to different extremes, but we've all been through some things. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we can't let our past determine our future. Right. And it's a lot of, I mean, I see a lot of people in that where, you know, they might have had one hard time and they just let it change the whole course of their life. And it doesn't have to be that way. And a lot of people, you know, it's it's almost like they don't know what's going on, why they're in it. That's what I put here. Um, it's like uh, we do not know or understand why we are in certain predicaments, emotional states, or conditions. But it's because of something that's happened, a seed that we planted, or a seed someone else planted in us, and we just let it, we let it grow. We can't. Some seeds we can kill. You know, evil seeds. We need to cast those things away and um, ask God to come in and, and change it. Uh, put us on a new path, mm -hmm. but we don't we don't have to stay where we are. And I think a lot of our schools and just our culture in general don't. It doesn't tell us that we have power mm -hmm. to to change yeah. our lives, mm -hmm. which is not good. Right. <laughs> but, and then I put um, some of the consequences of having you know some of these seeds implanted in our life or you know, lifelong poverty. You see it generation after generation where nobody uh, breaks out of it. Mm -hmm. And then a lot of times when somebody does, everybody else feels jealous or guilty, mm -hmm. you know, because this person, well, what did they do? Mm -hmm. You know, when, when they really just, um, you know, decided to do something different, mm -hmm. made a change. I'm gonna go get a degree. I'm mm -hmm. gonna look for a better job. Mm -hmm. It's that easy. And they don't realize it, that they could do that same thing. I also put in um, just how a lot of those seeds, they may not directly come out like they were planted, but you know, you see a lot of uh, girls and boys now with like anorexia, uh, self image things. Mm -hmm. That's because somebody somewhere something they've seen mm -hmm. has told them that, you know, the way you look is not good enough. Mm -hmm. and, and then it just, it, it just runs rampant and it distorts. They hold the image of, uh, of themselves. They can't see themselves as they really are. And that causes, um, some see cause depression, suicide, mental disorders, just all different things. And then, like I said, a lot of people don't realize they, they've held on to something for so long, and they may not even understand it. You know, someone else may be able to see that there's something wrong, yeah. but they, they've held it so long that they really can't recognize it. That's why it's good to write down about, about yourself. What do you see wrong? Be honest. Yeah. You know, what are some things that I would like to change? And I think we all, you know, have something that we would like to change. And that's where being in your comfort zone, mm -hmm. getting out of your comfort zone. Some people are so comfortable in uh, even a bad thing mm -hmm. that getting out of that bad thing is, is uncomfortable for them. Even though that would be the best thing for them, mm -hmm. it's uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And again, just um, self-examination is an important tool. Um, it's not just supposed to reveal what we are doing right now or have stopped doing, but what uh, what God would have us to change about ourselves. And changing sometimes, change sometimes are not uh, sometimes are not comfortable for us, but necessary for us to transform. And it helps us um, to recognize, you know, the real life situations in which we need um, to help to ask for the Lord to help us, because some things are hard for us, or we may not un understand or how to do it, but the Lord will show us the way and how to do it. Mm -hmm. Also, um, taming your tongue, that's James 3, 1. Again, uh, what, what's in your heart comes out of your mouth. We all stumble in many ways, but our mouth is 
James uh, 3, 5, it says, Likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes great boasts. Consider what a great force is set on fire by a small spark. The tongue also is a fire, a world of evil among the parts of the body. It corrupts the whole body, sets the whole course of one's life on fire, and is itself set on fire by hell. So just as a rudder on a boat can change the direction, you know, you think of a yacht or those big cruise liners. It's a small rudder that actually uh, points the direction where the boat goes, which is just like our tongue. That's how the word describes it as a rudder. And it can change the direction of your life. We want to sometimes say that the Lord is in control of everything. But this says our tongue can change the direction of our life. So some things we definitely have control over. And our thoughts, the seeds that we plant in ourselves, mm -hmm. seeds that we've let grow and need to cut off. And I think a lot of times we kind of make excuses. I know I have before, mm -hmm. just not really being honest that, you know, we want to blame others or blame God or blame America, or blame the economy when it's me. Mm -hmm. I have control over my life. Mm -hmm. Some things, like I said, we want to be com uh, get comfortable in. We get comfortable in a job that we don't like. You hear that all the time. People work for a job for 20 years and they hate it. Why do it? <laughs> like, we're comfortable with it. Uh, being comfortable in a relationship that you dislike. Um, you know, you hear that too. Sometimes people get divorced after 20 years. Well, why don't you just do that back then? You could have enjoyed yourself. But we get comfortable in things. And Again, I think that's a part of our society. We, we don't tell our kids that, you know, when you try something new, uh, when you go um, try to get your degree, it's going to be difficult. When you try something new, it may not be easy, but you can get to it. You can get it. So sometimes we need to not be afraid of that discomfort that a new change can have. Uh, one thing I wrote down was the opposite of courage is conformity. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's not always good to conform just to be like everybody else, mm -hmm. um, do what everybody else is doing. It's okay to be different. Mm -hmm. You know, it does take courage to be, um, to do something no one else is doing. Mm -hmm. If you put in a little bit, you're going to get out a little bit. If you put in a whole lot, you're going to get out a whole lot. Then I also brought a CD for y'all. It, um, it's, it, what's the name of this message? Uh, Be a Do Something Church. Mm -hmm. I think that's what uh, Pastor Sarah talked a little bit about uh, before she left, that we need to get out here and do something. I heard a great message on that. I'm give it to y'all. But it, uh, one thing he says is just a lot of times people come to church because they want to learn something but they don't want to be jammed up or confronted. In other words, teach me something I didn't know so I can feel smart, but don't tell me something about myself that I don't like. Now, those are two different things. He said, oh, I'm going to go to church to learn something good. I'm going to be more holy because um, I'm going to learn something new. And he said, uh, 1 Corinthians 8, 1, but knowledge puffs up while love builds up. Um, I'm going to learn some information, but don't, you know, step on my toes. We don't want to, I mean, in order for something to change, you you know, you're going to have to do something different. Something, we all need changes. Something we got to change. Mm -hmm. Something. Amen. Because mm -hmm. um, one time when Pastor was preaching, and I heard um, what you're talking about, mm -hmm. but really the problem is in the churches is, People don't want to hold people accountable. And the Bible says you're supposed to do that. Mm -hmm. and, and we don't want to do that. I'm not saying us in general, but I'm just saying people. people. You know, they don't want to go up here and say, now that's wrong. You smacked that old lady. 
<laughs> you know, but they'll sit back there and laugh about it. You know, I'm not saying that you laugh about me, <laughs> but I'm saying, but then, you know what I'm saying, but they'll sit there and laugh instead of saying, you know that was wrong. Mm -hmm. and, and, uh, and the Bible said, don't, don't tell, say that it's good when it's evil. Right, and, right. And, it's, and it's evil when it's good, uh, you know. And, and that's what we do. We don't. I have had a part to. about that too. It says, um, "This is just we make excuses for people. Mm -hmm. um, they'll lie to you. Um, I might say they'll lie to you. You better, you know, watch your money. But they got a good heart. You know, no, what's inside comes out of a person. Mm -hmm. So they can straighten up. It is possible for them to get right. But some things we need to tell them like they are. We don't need to sugarcoat them more. Right. Right. And then uh, one of the things that. This um, pastor does is how many of y'all would go into a strip club? I would. <laughs> that's what. That's <laughs> one of the guys sit there for. They person. have right. they have a ministry called the JC Girls, yeah. and that's yeah. what they do. Yeah, they take a basket of goodies, mm -hmm. um, perfume, soap, mm -hmm. things, mm -hmm. uh, a little book for them to read. And they take it into the strip clubs after they dance or what have you. They take it into the strip clubs, and that's how they get that connection. Right. Mm -hmm. So when those girls start to have trouble, they call them. They go to the hospitals right. with them when they then try to commit suicide. Mm -hmm. But that's one of the ministries that they do. Mm -hmm. They said men don't go, women go. <laughs> but right. that's one of the things that they do. There's a um, another ministry in their church. They go to convalescent home. Mm -hmm. They said. I think he said like 60% of those people never get a visitor, mm -hmm. ever. So they go um, visit them um, a couple times a month or I don't remember exactly, but it was at least, you know, a couple times a month where they go visit people in the convalescent homes. But we we can't be afraid to go anywhere, you know. Because it takes the foolish things of the world to combine the wise now that would be foolish to the world. Mm -hmm. She called yes. herself Christian, but she, she up in the strip. strip club. But, I, but when I come out of here, look, God gonna have what He wanted. See, yeah, mm -hmm. you went in there for yeah. a purpose. Uh -huh. right. But yeah. you have to also be equipped to go in. Right. Right. You just can't just, just go, go in, in there. there. Right. You have to prepare you for all. Right. 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 And he said that too. He said like um, there are people that go in clubs too. But he said if you have a problem with drinking. We don't want to see them go. But for people who are ready to go, that's, they do have ministries that do that. I thought that was a great thing, mm -hmm. too. Um, talk, I've just been learning a, a whole lot about different stuff. Um, negative and positive. You know, your negative, it, you can't get nothing good from negative. So just keep it out of your mouth. Keep it out of your thoughts. Um, if you're having problems doing that, um, some of the things they suggest, listen to a good song, get you out some praise music, do whatever you have to do mm -hmm. to stay away from negative thoughts and emotions. Back to the you have to cast that down every time you have a negative thought. Mm -hmm. You gotta find a word in the Bible about what's right. Cast down all the imagination, yeah. 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 keep constantly doing it every day. Mm -hmm. Every time the thought comes up. Yeah. 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 And I don't think we do that as no. a practice, no. you know. No. Maybe when something real crazy comes up, right. I do that. But you right. have to do that throughout the day. Get that crazy. Right. 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 your word is right. 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 a your enemy. Right. If you right. you also have to guard your thoughts. Mm -hmm. right. oh, guard your mindset. That's amazing. <laughs> you know, that's exactly what I told you. You got to, like a football player going to the ball, you got to go into your thoughts. You do, and uh, that's another little part, just motivation. Um, we become what we think about all day. Um, to change your lifestyle, we must change our thinking habits. We change our thinking habits by, by focusing on the good things that we want, uh, whatever, you know, that, that may be. But a lot of what I've been learning is just, our, th our thoughts are a big part of our, our problem. A lot of things that we've held on to, we need to figure out what those things are and, and deal with them um, and really just decide to, I'm going to let that go. I know I, I had talked about before when I used to, like my kids, my older kids that I used to hate them with a passion. Just, uh, didn't pay child support, didn't come see his kids, whatever. I, I, I had so much 
hatred. Not hatred, like I'm killed monsters. You should get on my nerves. <laughs> At some point, I really don't even remember when, but it just, I just, I'm not, it's not even worth it. Mm -hmm. I and now I can look at him, smile, whatever. If he asks me for something, I, it's just, I have no emotions. Mm -hmm. I love you, but, you know. So at some point we have to get like that with whatever has bothered us or um, your mother. My mom was adopted. I think she has some issues about that still, but <laughs> that's my point take on it. But a lot of things in our past have really hurt us. Mm -hmm. I was just gonna say the ultimately when we hold that kind of stuff inside us, it only holds us back and hurts us. Mm -hmm. And other people just going about and moving on with life and life. we just here mm -hmm. causing sickness and whatever else on our own self. Mm -hmm. It's an attitude. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It has to be an attitude. Mm -hmm. There are twelve things for our attitude. Mm -hmm. Checking attitude. And why do I feel like that? Yeah. Well, is it something I can do about it? Yeah. Yeah, if I, is it something I can do about somebody that did something to me 20 years ago? Mm -hmm. yeah. No. I need to be dead. Yeah. Or I'm yeah. guilty. Yeah. 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 That's one of the. Right. 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 That's one of the, the biggest things that they say that you should do is to forgive. Yes. That will mm -hmm. release. A lot of world things, of trouble all people. A lot of things. And then a lot of things, like I was telling them in group today, a lot of things, I, I just speak for me, was not really forgiving people. Because I, I had that down bad. A lot of my issues came from me not forgiving myself mm -hmm. and, and not knowing it. You mm -hmm. see what I'm saying? Saying, oh, yeah, I have, but I had really, once the Lord had started showing me my issues and stuff, no, I had not. I still was holding on to that stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, and I was thanking God because I was like, you know, I was thinking about my ex-husband and I was like, you know, I don't even remember his birthday. <laughs> so that means, you know what I'm saying? So that means God didn't erase their memories. Mm -hmm. and, and that's a blessing, but you have to be willing for their memories to be released. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And, and like you said, I mean, we hold on to stuff. Well, I don't want to hold on to nothing. Right. I'm detach from me. That that book pastor gave us, probably did you get one that served your book? Mm -hmm. Got some good de de declarations and degrees in it. Mm -hmm. And that's something we can do, you know. Here's the word. Give something out of there, like you said. Degree it. Oh, thank you, Andy, because I thought about this right here. Because I can use it. You show help me. You know, like when you get up in the morning, be like, well, how do I feel today? Mm -hmm. And then once you see how you feel, mm -hmm. that, that, that's good for me. Mm -hmm. Then you can fat, figure out what well, I need to go up on uh, the chart. Or, or why yeah. am I feeling right, this right, way? Right. See, you just don't think about it on your own. And you, mm -hmm. and up, but this will help me to so definitely help me. Because then I can figure out, well, well why am I feeling anxiety? <laughs> you know, uh -huh. and I'm just sitting in the party. Why am I, <laughs> you know, something wrong with that bitch? No. True, true. So, yeah, so sometimes when we get up in the Thank the Lord for us being there. But sometimes we get up in the morning and say, Oh Lord, it's time to get up. <laughs> you know, you know. Gratitude is another um, one of those high energy um, mm -hmm. emotions mm -hmm. that will help me. Gratitude, forgiveness. And when you get up in the morning and, and you thank Him, thank Him for being alive, thank Him for having the activities of your life. Your whole day runs off. Whole lot of prayer. You set the course of your day? Yes. <laughs> and at least read one scripture. Because I learned that too. If you don't put some kind of word in you and just think you just don't, uh -uh, it don't work for me. Uh -uh, and I have to read. So, and I, I started on, I, I like how God does things. I started on the songs of, songs of song, the, the uh, love, mm -hmm. and uh, Corinthians. That's what he got me. Strengthen my love walk. Mm -hmm. Once you get your love walk down pack, you got it going on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You need to love people even when they hate you. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but that's a, a, a lot of what I've been learning. And, um, your heart can, um, they can measure, like so far, I think it's like 15 feet that your heart is actually emitting out energy that mm -hmm. they can actually mm -hmm. measure. Mm -hmm. So if you think of, you know, some rooms you come in, everybody, you feel that love. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's good energy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sometimes when you come in, you don't feel no love. <laughs> <laughs> that's my energy. 
So your heart can actually um, put out energy. It's also uh, magnetic, mm -hmm. where it can draw in things, which mm -hmm. is some of that bad stuff it draws in and it keeps it. Mm -hmm. so, you just have this. I'm all about you can learn about, you know, yourself. Just study and watch your heart, watch your thoughts, um, watch your emotions. Mm -hmm. You know when something is off, when you feel, like you said, anxiety, what's going on? Mm -hmm. Check yourself, you know. <laughs> Do I feel I'm fear? Why am I feeling fear? And, you know, I just got out of bed. Right. Or, <laughs> just, we have to really start paying attention to ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, and we can, you know, cut a lot of stuff off. Like she said, we pass a lot of stuff down before it even gets to that point. And a lot of um, stuff that we think on is just a belief. A belief is just something that you think um, continuously over and over again. So, I believe I'm rich. I'm rich. I'm, I'm going to believe that every day. Right. <laughs> I'm, you know, I'm healthy. I'm going to believe I'm healthy. Yeah. We just have to, whatever we want, we have to reiterate it in our spirit and, and put the word on it, like she said. But that's just a little bit of the stuff I've been learning. And I do have the CD for y'all. It was really good. Um, just about what the church can do. I, I do want to start doing some stuff too. Amen. 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 You hurt your right mm -hmm. knee. Yeah, I, pop, I popped it out of sight. I did this too. Morning. I did this. Getting into my car. Before I came here, my right knee. You got to get it out of the car. Well, that was some good stuff. Amen. Amen. Because when she was talking, I was thinking about my mother. Because my mother had an in large car. And I always said, Well, God, how do you get an in large car? But it's from all the cares of the world that my mother took on as life because she never was taught, you know, like way back in her time. Right. And um, my mother got married at 15 and had, I mean, it's 14 of us. And so, you know, it, it, you take, your heart takes a lot. A lot. So it means something. I got to thank my oldest sister. She got a heart. A lot of people get stressed. Mm -hmm. Hers were stressed. Kids. Kids. Mm -hmm. Kids. Mm -hmm. Elder kids. Right. They wasn't no kids. They were no <laughs> kids. Right. Yeah, but yeah, that's something. But um, that's something I learned. Nobody's going to stress me out by making them upset. You have to allow people to do yeah. what they want to do. Right. Right. They want to ask. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I try to. Like, you know. mm -hmm. Because I can't walk in the room at my job sometimes. I can feel the energy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The first thing I say, what the hell? <laughs> <Why? Why? laughs> I have to walk out of the room because it's so much heavy. It could be one person bringing the energy. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, Lord, I'm, I must be the only one feeling this. God, I got to take a walk. <laughs> I can go outside to, you know. Okay, okay but that's, that's what I do. But that was good. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. So, uh, I guess it wasn't any more questions because Miss Sister Amy was there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Bye. She went to get the CD. Okay. So, I guess that's true. There's nothing else.
bless the speaker this evening. Bless the pastor. Um, bless everybody that was here, those that were here to hear. Um, amen. Well, 